The United Kingdom's vote to leave the European Union has cast doubt over so many EU plans, including the Unified Patent Court. The idea was to create a single European patent, covering all the EU states which had ratified the court. But with the Brexit referendum deciding in favour of the Leave campaign, it's now anyone's guess as to what happens next. Italy can only replace the UK after the United Kingdom has formally left the European Union as one of those founding members of the UPC. Now, given the uncertainty over when new British Prime Minister Theresa May will formally start the process to leave the EU, it could take years for the UPC and unitary patent regime to become operational. It will be a challenge, I won't lie, because then you have to have others step up, right? So it's, it'll, be, it'll be a unique situation that we would find ourselves in. You know, I still think it's, there's attractiveness in Europe as it exists now, in the different venues like UK, in, uh, in, in France, in Germany. Some of these are, are, are fairly attractive venues for litigation, right? So, and I think that will continue uh, with or without a unified patent court system. Others speaking at IPBC Global 2016 in Barcelona before the Brexit vote agreed that the development of a unitary patent in Europe was unstoppable. I think it'll still continue. I think it'll take a little bit of rearranging of the deck chairs, figuring out where to put the particular courts and so on and, and where the people are going to come from. But I think that'll continue. I think that's a system that has its own momentum, particularly given what's going on in the US. Uh, if the UK were to leave, I think the UK will probably then try to establish itself as another venue that's an important venue and it's increasingly been gaining in that role. And so I think the UK will be fine in either situation if it leaves or if it stays. And I also think that the, uh, the unified court system has tremendous momentum behind it that I, I don't think the Brexit will derail that. The uncertainty over the UPC also doesn't change the fact that other countries are still beset with significant problems, especially the United States. The changing landscape with treatment of standard essential patents and other patents being challenged in the patent office has certainly led uh, some consternation with people that are wanting to assert their patents, right? Because they're, they're really not understanding whether or not the patent's going to survive a challenge, whether or not it's you know, the litigation is going to stand up. In the U.S., litigation costs are skyrocketing. It costs a lot of money. It takes a lot of time. The court system is bogged down with a lot of different cases. Uh, the case law is changing. You know, Alice and these other decisions are constantly reshaping the decisions that are coming across. And so that leads companies to think twice about starting a litigation in the United States or, or continuing on with the, with the legal costs that it takes, you know, to do so. And so uh, Europe is becoming uh, a more attractive venue from that perspective. And it's, uh, it's much quicker and it's much cheaper to litigate in, in countries like Germany. There is definitely a move, even in the U.S. and, you know, in good faith when I advise clients or just, you know, people who ask me questions in the U.S. about protection of innovation, particularly in the biotech and software industries, I have to honestly tell them that it is now easier and more certain that you can get patent protection for biotech or software innovation in Europe and China than it is in the US. I think Europe has, has had the luxury of having very good quality. They've always, uh, the EPO has always uh, enforced good quality patents. And, and that's a factor with, with uh, the system in, in, in having some of these patents being put in through the court system because they survived challenges because they're really good quality patents. Germany is frequently cited as being particularly strong, which again won't change much with the UK leaving the EU. We've used the system in Germany, we've litigated in Germany, and we've been quite pleased with the results, um, not just because we've been successful, but because the judges are actually uh, quite balanced, they're very thorough, um, maybe even more thorough than uh, I would, may have liked them to, to have been in certain situations. Um, but the system is, seems to be solid, fair, balanced, um, uh, transparent, and really looking to find true value in the patents and not necessarily um, biased in any way, which to be very frank, is how it feels currently in the U.S. But despite all the positive commentary, implementation of the UPC could still be years away. I think it's a, a great concept. 
but the reality is right now it's just a concept. Uh, it's an idea, great idea, but it's just an idea. Um, so we don't really know, A, when it will be instituted, depending on the Brexit situation. Uh, and if it is instituted, we won't really understand how it operates and how the judges operate and how the system operates for quite some time as well. So I think we'll be in this gray period for patents on, on both sides of the Atlantic. As with anything, execution will be key. It's certainly as structured and as envisioned, it has a lot of attributes, but it will also have downside. We'll have bumps and lumps around along the way as laws are harmonized. It will come down to the um, implementation by the judges of the various local courts in particular, of the different local flavor, as they call it, that will be applied by the court in harmonizing those and really making that effort. But if, that's the, if that becomes one of the goals and the, and the judges are highly qualified, I think it will occur, but we're going to have a bit of a transition and people should be tolerant of the transition period. The problems in the US and the uncertainty in Europe could also benefit another important player, Asia. The Chinese uh, courts have been trying and they've been sending you know, delegations to the US for many years and trying to absorb you know, how the system works and they've, they've certainly built a robust system. But I think it's going to take a little more uh, perhaps transparency and a little more experience and familiarity for you know, global players to trust the fates of their global disputes into the Chinese court system. And that will take a long time, perhaps a decade or more. That's where Europe is clearly ahead of that, you know, um, ahead of China, anybody else for that matter. But don't write off the U.S. just yet. Keep in mind, the disputes in the U.S. are not just U.S. disputes. The U.S. has acted as the ultimate arbiter of all technology disputes worldwide whether it's you know, microwave technology or DRAM technology or you know, uh, display technology or processor technology. All these things have been adjudicated in the U.S. Why? Because the court system and the rule of law is what everybody trusted as the ultimate voice in that. For Europe to become that, they clearly need that level of uh, gearing up of infrastructure to handle the volume of cases. Believe me, everybody is headed towards Europe. But I think if Europe hasn't geared up, I think everybody's going to be sorely disappointed when they get there because the lines are going to stretch out. It's, it's very similar to the security queues at the airport. If you don't have enough examiners, you don't have enough uh, courts and judges, the, the delays are going to inevitably uh, permeate. Mark Laudy at IPBC Global 2016 in Barcelona.